Hey Andy, thank you very much for having us both over. Great to see you. Thanks for spending a few minutes to chat about your really cool bike. Well, you're welcome, Mike. What I'm showing you here today is a 1967 Norton P11, sort of a hybrid specialized bike that was produced by the AMC Corporation in limited quantities. This was Norton's solution to uh, the desert sled race that was going on in the Southwest United States at the time. I've owned this one about three years. I buy bikes and hold them and play with them for a little while and then move on or whatever. I'd like to be able to keep them all, but I believe in using them. I try and ride them, keep them in good fettle, yeah. good nick, yes, and, <laughs> uh, and just enjoy the machinery because when these bikes were being made, I missed out on that time period. I was just not quite old enough yet, you know. These were bikes your older brothers were riding. and. Yes. You know, you saw him when a little kid, it's like, that's what I want to do. I never appreciated how small the gas tank is on the P11. Yeah, and they used a, this, this gas tank is uh, very similar to the matchless tank, and they would put a matchless badge on these tanks as well. I believe they're two gallon, maybe two and a half. This bike features the matchless telehydraulic front ends, forks, front wheel, the braking system retains all the matchless parts there, as well as the rear hub and uh, the rear sprocket is also a, a matchless component. And so, I haven't seen a brake like that before as well. That's very interesting. Yeah. It's enormous hub, isn't it? They're super soft. So this 750 Norton engine uh, is fitted into a matchless G85 uh, frame uh, 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 to lighten it up. The matchless had a pretty good reputation for handling in the desert and in the dirt, but the 750 Norton engine produced the horsepower that they really were looking for in the day. So would this have started off as like an Atlas engine then that then became this It's model? essentially an Atlas engine. Okay. When I got it, it was, uh, wasn't running all that great. I've uh, replaced the carburetors on it, new tires. I found the proper seat for it. You know, I've done a few things to bring it up a little bit. It is essentially a stock correct P11. I love it. And we were just commenting about that bulge on the side of the tank as well for the for the badging. I never I never appreciated that that was there. Until you get the right angle, it's hard yeah. to really notice. Yeah, and uh, it is. I believe I'm sort of with you, Mike. I yeah. didn't yeah. I, it didn't occur to me until I first looked at it, you know, after owning it for a period of time. I was just looking at the pipes as well. They're almost like a straight through pipe. I don't think that's much of a baffle at the end of the bike, is it? They're essentially straight through, but this is the correct exhaust system for this machine. Oh, yeah. We're just catching you just in time, right? Because I think you're going to be swapping this bike out at some point in the near future. Yes, yeah, so one of my longtime friends, we've been motorcyclists buddies for a long, long while, and he has a 1958 Triumph TR6C that we've worked out a trade for, wow. and so he's taken this one back to his collection in Iowa, and subsequently it'll fit in nicely with several of the G80s and other AMC products that, uh, that oh, wow. he's focused on in his collection. Okay, that's hardcore then. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a Norton guy at heart, and I have mixed feelings about letting this one go. I figured out essentially around the time that I retired that I want to try and own a, several different kinds of British bikes yeah. and try them out and see for myself which ones work for me and which ones don't. And uh, you can't keep them in your collection. So to be able to do that, you own them for a period of time and then you put them out in the world again. I, I admire for being able to do that because I get I get like emotionally attached <laughs> well, to sure. the bikes. There's a few in the oh, shop yeah. that I've had a long, long while that I don't believe they'll leave for Best quite some time. They're but, keepers, yeah, for but, sure. Uh, no, but, it's uh, brilliant. This, I love this it. One, it's a it's a hoot to ride. It's light and nimble. Makes plenty of power. The gear ratios are slightly different in the AMC box. You know, you'll notice that okay. it's, it's sort of cocked in there yes. to be able to fit it in the the frame. Yeah. So a little bit shorter, it won't top out like a Roadster will, but uh, it's quick. That peg is on like a loop, isn't it, I see there? Yep, they've got a loop welded out here and then, uh, you know, just a folding foot peg, no rubbers on them, that's, that's how they came. The rear brake lever on this side is very minimal. So and the tack drive's very nice, I like that as well. That's a nice, nice look. 
coming off the off the timing side. Yeah, until you snagging on a piece of pucker brush or whatever, and then okay, well, who needs a tachometer anyway? <laughs> it's all right here. <laughs> really great bike, Andy. Well, thank you. We've enjoyed it. It's pretty. It's fascinating. You don't see them, which is part of the appeal. You know, I've been awful proud to be able to own it. Absolutely. It's a great machine, and I've really struggled with it in terms of should I move it along, but it's all part of the hobby for me anyway, because yeah. I like to ride them. I mean, the, the museum pieces in my collection tend to go away. <laughs> I, I can't, because I want to use them, play with them. And, of course. And talking of riding them, would you mind giving it a little ride up and down? Uh, well, if we'll get to see if we can get this okay. cantankerous old thing started <laughs> up. Oh yeah, it's dripping out there, Andy. Oh yeah, no, this one, she likes a good drink, this oh. one. I figured that out. <laughs> Zeke, you're gonna have to leave it. That ticks over well. That's a nice idle. Oh, this thing yeah. runs great. Yeah. It really does. Uh, the guy I bought it from has 11,000 miles on it. God. And uh, so I bought it from a fellow who was part of the Northern California Norton Owners Group. Yeah. He found it, had a broken valve spring. Just refresh the head, deglazed the cylinders, put it back together, resealed it, retains all its original parts. They're a little pitted in the chrome, and, Just but it's like complete. It. It's 1969, number 29 from the first very production S that they had. This one's 29th model, March of 69. Awesome.